I gotta have the sun, you know? I don't know how much longer I'm gonna live here. I can't take it no more. And then you gotta deal with this crap. So, I borrowed my youngest son's car. Um, and I'm trying to jump this. I should go get my charger. I let someone borrow my charger that plugs into the electrical cord. Um, what I should do is invest in a jump pack. I tried to jump this with the peat, but for some reason the peat will fire up like nothing, but it doesn't want to jump the truck. Now, that's not a 24 volt system, so it's, it's just a 12 volt system. Uh, the batteries aren't hooked up, you know, like you would like a bulldozer or anything like that. Um, these are these auto crap batteries, which is basically was the cheapest battery at my local auto parts store. Um, I don't like them. Normally I get interstate batteries. This truck's a 2002 and the last time I put batteries in this I didn't want to go down to the interstate dealer and buy the batteries. So I went to the local auto parts store and I bought these auto crap batteries. Now the peat has interstate batteries and that thing fired up last night in the cold like nothing. I had a big six wheeler. It was like a Volvo white. The year that they morphed had like the auto car cab. Um, it was just an ugly truck. My wife used to make fun of it all the time. But that had interstate batteries in it. And I've always had really good luck with the interstate batteries. But then, fast forward years later, and this truck, which is a 7.3, this truck here, I've never had any problems with it. You know, I don't count batteries and, you know, and brakes and tires. I don't count that as problems. I count, like, if you had, like, an engine problem. I've never had any problems with this with this 7.3. It's, it's... It's like the, the tortoise. You know, it ain't the fastest, but as long as you got good batteries, it, it goes. I, want, I really want to get this truck started. I want to get this truck out of here and get it up to where I have some tools. Because there's no tools back where this is parked. That way I can get these batteries out and then go get some new ones. But this time, I'm going to go get the interstates. Um, but there's a little bit of a process to taking these out. Um... But let's see if it'll start. Let's see if that little Nissan car will, will, uh, I don't want to hurt the car either. I don't think we are, but. So, for those of you who don't have diesels, that little squiggly line there, I'll do it again. See the squiggle line? What that is, is that the glow plug. There we go. All right, for those of you who don't know, the squiggly little line that I was showing you for the glow plugs, what that is is diesels have glow plugs that preheat. So what you have to do is wait till that little light goes out. One thing I did notice about my son's car, which I'm gonna have to take care of for him because he's 16. Look at this. Which, when I say take care of for him, I mean like I'm gonna make him do that. I'm gonna make him clean that, because that's the best way to learn. Get out of here. We are going to this place that sells the interstate batteries. Uh, I like the interstate batteries. Um, if you have a different battery that you like, you know, the internet is just opinionated information. This, this is just my opinion that I like. My personal opinion is the interstate batteries are the best batteries for me. Now, they only sell these things, I don't know, like four towns over in a little strip. Uh, there's like an interstate store. I'm not bringing the old batteries with me for the core charge because I called the guy ahead of time and he said it's only $16. And he said you can return them anytime. Um, and I need the truck to go get the batteries. I could have put them in the trunk of the car, but um, it's not my car. And the person who 
whose car it is, uh, he needs it to go to work. So, I am not going to bring the batteries right now, and after finding out, I can return any battery at any time and get, you know, uh, 16 bucks per battery. Uh, I have a pile of older batteries in my storage uh, container that the guy said I can bring all of those there. So I probably have 10 of them. Batteries to DIY 4. And they got a picture of a lawnmower, cordless drill. Uh, get it? DIY? DIY? Batteries to die for? Haha. <laughs> Ah, I see what you did there, Interstate. Oh, you're so funny. Hi. Good afternoon. How you doing? I got a 2002 I called about. Uh, oh, yeah, the 65? Do you know which one you want to go with? The uh, top line? Or cool the, seam uh, in here. I haven't been in here before. Warranty on the I'll probably just go with the um the lesser because I'm cheap. Yeah. Oh, actually, we used to sell these ones at uh at the hardware store I used to work at for the uh, the little lawnmower batteries. So I do recognize that. All kinds of phone chargers, USB, all that. Pretty neat store, huh? I always find battery terminal cleaners like up and around there. Probably need batteries, right? I mean, yeah, I would assume. Or on these little tool racks. Perfect, just like that. Boom. All right, I'm gonna get this and then get out of here. PB, PB, PB. We're getting the big can. This stuff is kick ass. He says, but that's all I want to tell you. <laughs> he's the only, he's, he's one of two guys that I've ever met in my entire life where if someone tells you a story about them, it, it's like, you know, people bullshit. Like, oh, yeah. I no like, bullshit. Oh, about you it. I mean, this dude literally almost died on the operating table from having a pool stick cracked over his head. I have the stick here because one of the cylinder things, um, the hood cylinders, uh, went just went bad. So I got to get one of those. However, anyways, um, first things first, I'm gonna probably take off this side. This is the easier side. Um, let me get some tools. I got this cheap Harbor Freight tool wrenches, which is not a problem. They've always served me fine. So I, I took the ground off first because some old dude once told me to take the ground off first. Um, I did loosen this one up before I put the camera on it. But I remembered what he said, that things have to ground out in order to work. You have to have a good ground. So when you're taking things apart, batteries, disconnect the ground first. I don't know. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I take the positive off first, I don't know. Now normally, you would have a wedge in the bottom of this battery to hold it from moving, but they always rust and break. Now I think this, I don't, I think this is like a fireproof thing, or like a heat, blank, a heat blanket or something. I actually don't know what the hell this is. If anyone knows what this is, Please let me know in the comments. It's insulated. So I don't know if it's to keep the battery warm. I'm not sure. Now, normally, I don't know if you can see it. Down in here, they have a wedge. Little plastic thing. And there's a rod that comes up to, you know, like halfway up. You'd put a socket on it and you would turn it. Every one of these trucks that I've had, and I've had a whole bunch of these Ford trucks. Every one of those that screws into the pan breaks off. No matter how many times I score it with PB, they break off. So I'll, when they do that, I don't replace them. I just leave the battery just the way it is. And um, I've never had a problem. Um, they don't, the batteries don't really move. So let's get this out of here. Made in 
Korea. Problem is, I can't reach over the fender. Too good because I'm too short. Ah, there we go. All right. Put the handle down. Now, this is a 65 series. Okay, M-65 HC. What that is, is that's a series of batteries um, for this diesel truck that it requires. Not all batteries are the same. Off the top of my head, I don't even remember, but it's like, it's got something to do with cranking amps and cold cranking amps and and i'm not gonna go into a school on battery because i honestly don't remember but whenever you replace your batteries you really need to figure out exactly what your vehicle needs for cold cranking amps now all i did was tell the guy that i i've replaced enough of these batteries i just say there's 65 series and that's pretty much all i tell him but if you haven't dealt with it before you need to um you need to first figure out what battery and a lot of times like if you go to a place like i went to they actually will look up your vehicle and they will actually tell you what you need for a battery so um you don't have to second guess it but i called the guy on the phone and told him you know the batteries and he, you know and he said he had them so all right now i'm gonna put this back on now i'm assuming this is like a heat blanket or i don't know this might even be uh i'm gonna i'm gonna try to find out what this is later now i'm kind of curious might even just be a, a acid diaper or something you know so i'll put that back on you can see the cutout here for the wedge that goes down in there. But like I said, this, this doesn't have the wedge anymore. I could drill that out and then put one in there, but realistically, there's no sense in bothering the battery. That hasn't had a wedge in it in years and the battery never moves. Now, look at this, they put the barcode right on this dang thing. All right, now what I like to do is clean up the uh, the copper. You can see in here, see the copper color? I hope you can see it. But these things don't cost that much, you know? Put it in there, get it nice and shiny. And then uh, get this one nice and shiny. Nice. Then what I do is put the cap back on. Then you see the bristles in here. What I like to do is, even though this is new, I like to shine this up a little bit, the lead. Just a little shine to it. Now, I know this sounds crazy, but for some people, Look at when you get your battery, the red is obviously positive. But if you have two of the black ones, the easiest thing to do is if you look on the battery right here, it'll have a plus for positive, and over here it'll have a minus for negative. Now I know that sounds crazy to some of us, but there are people in the world that don't know this stuff. Let's say that you're like an inner city person, you know, or like somebody that's lived in the city and, and took public transit, you know what I mean? Uh, how would you know any of this? 
you would go on YouTube or some platform and you would basically you would look it up so if there's not enough people on YouTube telling us about it then how are we gonna learn so even though it sounds simple and stupid we're still gonna step by step do everything all right now the guy at the place I asked him for this specifically uh, it's um and this is what he gave me this little spray can um, battery terminal protection spray so you just put it on like so all right now even though it's red you can do both both it'll probably dry purplish so now let's go do the other side all right well this one as you can see is pretty pretty grody here so This driver's side is a little bit more difficult because there's more wires because we have the transfer pump. Uh, I actually did wire in a fuse, fusible link to the transfer pump when I put it on. It doesn't come with one, but I put it in here. But we have a lot more wires over here. But the steps are pretty much similar. The only thing of it is when you have two batteries and you have a diesel, here's the thing. You gotta remember. This is connected to positive on that side. So when you go flipping it over, okay, you wanna make sure you don't flip it over and touch it on something metal, cause it will arc out. So what I like to do is I like to put this back over it. You know? That way we don't have a problem, you know? Because we now have to do the next step, which is pulling off this piece of plastic. Now, do you see this wedge I was telling you about? That's what the other one was supposed to have. However, I did put never seize on this one because the last time I had any of these batteries out the other one side broke so this side came out fine so i did put nevises on it so we'll see if it comes out uh okay this time i may have to get a socket for that though i don't think this wrench will fit in there oh maybe ah it does we got lucky so just because it works, I'm gonna continue to use it. Um, and I'm gonna put it back in because what's the point in taking it out and throwing it out just because the other side broke, you know what I mean? Plus, I would like to have this stay um, put right where it is because I don't know if you can see here but this is where the air comes in through the, through the front of the truck, through the radiator. And it goes past here and then goes into the air breather box. So it is actually very important that this battery on this side does not move. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Come on. That's what the wedge looks like. Now you want to keep in mind that the indent side goes on the bottom lip of the battery. But like I was saying, I don't want this to accidentally move over or bounce around or anything and, and block off that, you know, the airflow thing. Which it shouldn't, as long as the cover stays down or as long as it stays down in the groove where it belongs. Okay.
All right. Now, this shouldn't move too much in this box because there is a little lip here, but if you hit a bump, I mean, look it. You know, it could come all the way over. Highly unlikely, but. Now, we need to take off. Let's put the positive on first. All right, so. Let's take this. I may have to get a regular wire brush. I'm gonna do both holes and then I'm gonna get a regular wire brush blush I meant to say it was brush I'm gonna get a regular wire brush for the bottom here <laughs> see it's nice and shiny inside but these don't do very good on the bottom. I mean, you, you could, but it'd take a little long. So what I'm gonna do is use the regular wire brush. People don't realize that thing is copper. That's pretty good. Now I gotta do this one. This lip, see that lip? That goes on the bottom of the battery, has a lip on it. So, Come on. You don't have to go crazy tight with this either, you know. It's just, it's it's got little grooves in it to keep it from moving around. So Nice. Put the handle down. Put the breather box. Back on. Then Let's just cake it on. Now, put that back on. All right, let's see how fast it cranks over. Well, all right, guys, I know that wasn't the most exciting thing in the world to watch, but that's just part of the stuff that I do behind the scenes with the trucks and equipment is replacing parts like batteries, alternators, um, you know, brakes. Um, it's all part of what it takes to run trucks and equipment and be an owner operator I can't just drop things off at a shop um, and I don't have a full-time mechanic so a lot of what you 
don't see on the channel, which I might start putting more in, is more repair work. Um, I am not a professional mechanic by any means, but no owner-operator really is. Um, most of us are just do-whatever-it-takes-to-just-make-it-happen kind of people. So, maybe that'll help somebody, maybe it won't, but with all the snow on the ground, that's what we're doing. Catch you on the next one.